are the marathon, a 42.2K run, the 26.2 mile journey, a true testament to the human will, proving that humans are built to be elite runners. You see, I have always loved my sports and my running. Six months ago, when I quit footy to pursue other goals, I went from being an athlete to a couch bum. For six months, I had done no exercise and I was stuck in a rut and I needed something big to pull myself out of it. So that's when I decided, I'm running a marathon. The catch, I'm only giving myself 30 days to train for it rather than the recommended 12 weeks. And this is what happened. Today is the 28th of February and it is my very first run. And I was quite worried because I'd already announced to everyone that I was doing the marathon challenge. And the funny thing is, uh, I hadn't even actually been for a run yet. So I didn't even know how I was gonna track along. Today is day one. Gone for about three Ks today. I'm already realizing that I really need to fix my diet if I'm gonna make this marathon. Straight away, my chest was heavy and yeah. My first run was quite tricky and I knew this was gonna be harder than I oh, thought. That sucked. But that's the first one. I'll get better. Definitely my diet needs to be fixed. Even for my next run, I ate a bit better and I went for a run, but I actually felt even worse with my time being a bit lower. And I knew I had to really push through if I was going to make it for this challenge. Then the third run came round. I got the first two blow out of my lungs and I could actually push myself to go a bit of a further distance. Oh, my legs. Holy My legs feel like they're still running because I've been doing it for like 45 minutes. It just feels like they're still going. So this was actually the longest run I've done so far, but I just didn't have enough energy and I wasn't recovering well. So I knew I needed some help. So I reached out to a nutritionist for well, some I mean, advice. even if you're prepping for a marathon over six months, it requires a pretty intense level of nutrition. <laughs> so if you've only got 30 days, we better, uh, better get into it. So from the conversation, I realized I wasn't eating enough and I actually needed to create a high carb and a high protein diet. So that's exactly what Johnny helped me with. And hey, don't make fun of my broken glasses. Anyway, it meant one thing. Yes, food, glorious food. I basically got a license to eat whatever I want. Well, not whatever I want. I had to eat good stuff and whatever Jono recommended me, but I basically had free will to eat more food, which in theory sounds good at first when you had to eat three large meals and a big snack on your non-training days and also weigh your food and make sure it's clean and make sure you're getting enough protein, make sure you're getting enough carbs, yum. Make sure you're getting enough food and you're always gonna be eating. Even when you're not hungry, you gotta force it down your belly. It actually became a chore in the end. You weren't eating because of pleasure. You were eating because you needed to, because you needed the energy to run. And I did gain a newfound appreciation for bodybuilders and endurance events. But now that I had my diet sorted, I was ready to take it off. Oh. Did you not learn from the first time? I thought the whole thing cooled down. No, the middle's gonna be so hot. So I went to go for one of my runs and I just really wasn't feeling it. And it sort of dawned on me the decision I had made. I felt really overwhelmed. I wasn't really sure I could do it. Eventually, the challenge all hit me at once. Just then, I ran 12 Ks. And I had to stop about three or four times just to walk and I... And I thought I'd feel good after a run, but I feel shit. I don't know, maybe I'm weighing over my head. I don't know. I tried to push through more runs, but I was lacking purpose. I was lacking motivation. I was just sort of going through the motions to get it done. And that's when I started to fall away. All right guys, today is Saturday, my first run since Monday. And the first five minutes, I felt like I was dying, I couldn't run. Now I pushed that five minute bike and warmed up, feeling great. We're going for 50 minutes cruisy today. Just to get back into it, I've been a bit slack this week. I'm disappointed in myself, but that's in the past and I've got to keep, got to make up for it now and all the way up to the marathon. Let's keep pushing, eh? Remember, when you set a goal, you have to achieve it. 
even if you slack on it at some points, you gotta keep yourself to a better standard. I didn't do that, but that's what I'm doing now. Remember, never settle, push yourself. This is the best time to run. run a half marathon that would be officially in history of my life <laughs> the longest I've ever run in a go or in a game or anything that's right I'm getting nervous blood's pumping and I'm ready to go let's do this let's go. and do this we did I started on the venture of my longest run ever now this was the half marathon and it started off great you know the first five ten k's you're flowing had my energy gels and I had my water and I just really hit a flow state. But being my longest run ever, I knew I was gonna hit a wall. Oh, 17 and a half. Last lap, guys. Last freaking lap. Oh, I haven't stopped yet. This really turned out to be one of the hardest runs I had ever done. I just remember feeling blisters and pain throughout my legs. Oh, did you actually finish? Yeah. You look like you're dying. I am. How do you feel? <sighs> I feel like there was a cut in my foot. Oh no, it's just a blister. Yeah. Oh man, that was 21.1. Oh, can't believe that's only halfway. That blister. It was really crazy to think the amount of pain I was in and that in 10 days, I'd have to run double that. Getting close and closer to the marathon, I realized I actually needed some more advice. And around this time, Mackenzie, who was an elite runner, reached out to me to give me some awesome tips. Uh, just make sure you're, like, you're pre-hydrated enough. So you gotta be well fed the night before. Maybe a veggie pizza. That's what I have. Uh, spicy veggie Domino's pizza. Like so I haven't run one for a while. I did one, yeah, like, yeah, 30 days is probably not the appropriate training, but it's gonna be painful, like about 30K. You're gonna hit that wall, the, the, the runner's wall, if you heard of that. That's where the mental game comes in. Like, so much more of it's gonna be mental. Like, the human body was built for this, so your body can do it. I've got full confidence in you. Thanks, um, mate. No worries, mate. <laughs> what time do you think I'll get? I was thinking, like, 408 or something because you're gonna hit that wall at like 30k and slow down but yeah i'm thinking 408 man i'm aiming to get under four hours i'm gonna yeah. try and break it now probably gonna be the hardest thing that you ever you've ever done up until this point thanks a lot for that catch well have a good day i also scheduled a meeting with the west australian marathon club and they set me up with two very successful runners and just getting advice to them was priceless my main question i thought when i started this challenge is am i going to die could I die running this marathon or pass out? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Depends uh, what time of the day you started, I guess, and how hot it is. So what is your experience with your running in the past? So I'm doing about 140 kilometers a week, roughly. Yeah, yeah, I'm on about 100 at the moment. So when I heard about your challenge, it was like, wow, this guy's uh, really pushing the envelope. All in. All in, yeah, that's right. So, yeah. it's... so they were very helpful when I got some good insights about what it's like to prepare and run a marathon. And if you want to watch the full interview, I have the link in my description. So I go back to my training and something happened that I hadn't really anticipated. All right, so I'm jogging. It's only been like two, three minutes. And in my right foot, I'm just feeling this like sharp pain on the inside of my ankle and it's actually quite painful. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm like four days out. I can feel myself limping walking now. I basically booked the next available appointment anywhere for the physio, just so I can get seen and get this sorted straight away. Two days ago, I went for a run and I felt fine. Went for a run yesterday, got about 600 meters until I felt like uh, a bit of sharp pain in 
Yeah. So I finished explaining all the problems I was going through and we went through a few walking tests and a running test and she felt around the area before she told me what she think the problem is. With your pain, you've irritated a tendon that lives on the inside of your ankle. I think you would be quite in a lot of pain during and after. I think you'd have a bit of a swollen ankle. Do you recommend me running? My recommendation is no, mainly just because at the moment the body is telling you that it needs adequate recovery. However, if you would like to, I am happy to assist in all ways possible to yeah. be able to um, facilitate you running. So we took every precaution we could to really minimize the pain I would receive by taping me up adding a heel lift and also massaging my leg. Yeah, so she obviously recommended me against running, but when I told her that was no option, then she gave me some strapping, like a massage, and basically said it just needs to rest. Yeah, I might have to not push so hard to get my best time. I might have to back off and, you know, relax it up a little bit, which is annoying, but I guess long-term health over short-term gain. After I got home, I actually realized I wouldn't run until the actual marathon. So it was just rest for the next four days, managing the injury. And the next time I'm running will be 42.2 Ks. So the last three days I just rested and stuck to my nutrition plan. And today was the first day my foot actually didn't hurt. So I went into the physio, we got some work done and I'm hoping the pain would be fine for tomorrow. Today is the day, the day I've worked so hard to get to, the day I push myself to a place I've never been before, the day I face the toughest challenge of my life. The last 30 days have been so hard and it has all come down to this moment. I've quit and half committed to so many things in my life, but this day is the day that dies as I become the person I choose to be. And so, begins the journey. Almost 915 meters in, <laughs> almost done my first lap. It's going good. Got my helper guys. Oh. Thanks, Lewis. He's pacing me. All right, guys. Next update. 53 minutes, 8.61 k's. Well, my ankle's starting to hurt a tiny bit. I can just feel it in every step. And I also have to pee. All right. I may be wasting like 20 seconds, but this is gonna gain me a lot of time. That was so annoying. <sighs> All right, back onto it. Around 10 Ks in, I was still feeling pretty good. And I think one of the most special parts for me was having my friends there to run laps with me because I was just solo. So having that support, family and friends around me, running some laps, having fun, it meant the world to me and it made the run so much better. Uh, 21.99 k's, hour 56 minutes. We're going strong, we're going good. Every lap, my legs just getting heavier and heavier, a bit harder, but they always say around the 20 to 30 k mark, that's the hardest, because you're dead in the middle. And in the last 10 k's you can bring it home. I'm starting to walk a couple times, walking really helps. When you stop and walk, it gives you like, even if you're walking for 20 seconds, your lactic acid goes down and it gives you another crack. How you feeling? You're the one who's blowing. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm still under two hours. I'm about to hit two hours, guys. We got an elite runner pacing me. <laughs> Welcome, mate. Zoom, zoom. So I think I'm going to come first in this race. Yeah, nice. And last as well. I'm the only runner. <laughs> All right, guys. I've uh, just hit 25 k's, 25.5 k's in two hours, 16, 24 seconds. This is officially the furthest I've ever run. Every step I take is the furthest. I am in a lot of pain. I'm on track to get under four hours. Like, 
my injury isn't even concerning me. It's just my, my knee, my muscles, my quad, my calf. Every step I take, it's like someone's hitting it with a bat. And I've still got like 16 Ks to go. 16 and a half. So we're gonna get it, we're gonna get it. What's going on, Blake? That was the hardest thing I've ever done. How's your ankles feeling? I think it was fine, but my whole legs are just... It's like the most painful thing I've ever done, eh? And my goal now is just to finish it strong. At this point, I was in so much pain, and I still had so long to go, and it was all starting to overwhelm me. Each step I took just got harder and harder, and the pressure started to build up, up until the point where this happened. All right, you guys didn't see it, but I was walking with Jasmine and I just felt sick and I just threw up a bunch of water and uh, a bit of gel, I think. Yeah. A bunch of water and a bit of gel. It's getting hot. I'm just gonna walk a little bit and then I'm gonna start running in a minute. 36.37 Ks in, three hours, 29. I just had to stop and walk. My legs are so painful. This is the most painful thing I've ever done. My whole body's just telling me to stop and give up. I felt so close, yet so far away from the finish line. And it made me think back to all the training I put myself through and the reason why I'm doing this. Why are you running? Why are you doing this? Why don't you just quit? And those thoughts kept popping up, but I just kept, I just kept going. And then I almost had this small little voice behind me also jump in and say, I'm not letting you quit. You're not quitting. There's so many things you half commit to and you never follow through and you always quit. I'm not gonna let you quit. Even though this was the worst amount of pain I'd ever been through, there was no way I was quitting. Even if I had to walk and crawl to the end, that's exactly what I was gonna do. But you get to a point where you can taste victory. Last up, guys. I'm coming, guys, I'm coming. All right, guys, we picked it up. We're at 41 Ks. We're on the last lap. We got Colby here now. Come on, we got this, mate. We got the crew, the sport crew coming. They can't catch me. I was walking, I was in pain. But now I feel the runner's high. We're gonna run the whole last lap. We got the support crew. Let's get it, let's get it. Last lap. Ah, we're okay out, guys. One kilometer out. How do you feel, mate? Australian champion. Oh, that was amazing. That was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And 30 days later, I had achieved something that I never thought I'd be able to do. I was really in a bad place. I was stuck in a routine in a rut. And this has been one crazy adventure that I know will change me forever. And I think the most important thing is, I did this with family and friends, and I had people around me for support, to give appreciation to, and to celebrate with. Because nothing worth doing is worth doing alone. So if you have a crazy goal or a dream, I want you to go for it and give it the best shot you can. At first, it may not seem real, but then one day, you'll tell people what you did.